You are listening to the Legends Lingo Podcast, brought to you by CouchGuysSports.com. With your host, Al. Buddy, you were targeted six times. You caught two receptions and did nothing else. Powder. Yes, sir. And Fiesta. He hasn't done jack. They've won one cup and they made a lot of playoff attempts. But he is a snake, an oily snake. He's a crook. Enjoy the show. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Legends Lingo Podcast, episode 93, presented by Couch Guy Sports. This is the Richard Seymour episode. I'm your host, Al. I got my two guys here, Fiesta, Powder. Guys, it's election day. We're choosing the next leader or keeping the current leader of our country. We'll see what happens with the polls. How are we feeling just in general? Feeling pretty good, Al. How are you today? It's been a long day. It's been a very long day. Had my first observation today. When voted, it's it's been a whirlwind of a day, so it's been it's been pretty crazy. Fee, you're a political guy. You like getting into the politics on Twitter, besides the sports takes. How you feeling? Uh, I'm kind of happy that close to potentially 165 million people voted, and I think it shows that even through what we've talked about on this show and other things about social issues, that America that we still care about where we want this country to go. So I'm pretty happy that uh, of that. So, yeah, I'm yeah. assuming we all did our due diligence. We all voted. voted. Yeah. I uh, mailed in a while yeah. ago. You yeah. guys were Damn smart. Did the mail in. <laughs> you did. You two were smart. I decided to go in person, do it last second, but Hey, it all counts. It all counts the same. I'm trying to see, let's see if I can get it real quick. I think I have it on my sweatshirt. Hold on. Ha ah, there it is. The <laughs> sticker to prove it. The I voted sticker to prove it. Remember, if you, don't have a, if you don't have a sticker, you can't prove it right. <laughs> As always, we are presented by Couch Guy Sports. Go check out everything on the website, couchguysports.com. Go check out all the blogs. We hit the most views of any month in the month of October of 2020. So 2020 is looking up in a positive direction for Couch Guy Sports. I will say that. Check out all the podcasts besides ours. Obviously, we have Fiesta's other podcast, the Chasers podcast, him and Chris Jones. Go check that out. Small State Big Takes. Third and long, uh, take it or leave it. You guys know all the podcasts by now. Go check those out. And everything else, please go check out everything else that's on the website. We also have, obviously, our store, couchguyshop.com. Go check that out. Buy something from the store. There may be some Legends Lingo merch coming down the line. We're going to be working on that. So hush, hush. Stay tuned. And gentlemen, we, as always, are presented by our good friends at Manscaped. Autumn is in the air, and Manscaped is here to ensure that you don't carve your pumpkins when you're grooming. And by pumpkins, we mean, well, your boys downstairs. In fact, Manscaped is on a mission to change the way you approach caring for your balls. And great news, they just released products in the UK, Canada, and Australia. So Manscaped's going worldwide. Good to know. Let's not forget, it's the best trimmer for all parts of your body. We have the Lawnmower 3.0 trimmer that offers a replaceable ceramic blade with advanced skin safe technology, which helps reduce grooming accidents. Their new Weed Whacker, which is their ear and nose hair trimmer, uses the same skin-safe technology when you're trimming those delicate nose hairs of yours. The Crop Care Care Kit involves the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, and everybody knows that those pumpkin spice lattes and that ball deodorant goes hand in hand. It's like peanut butter and jelly. You got to make sure you have them both. We also have the Crop Cleanser Body Wash, which is a full body wash that you can also use on your hair. I've used it. It's great. It gives me nice hair, so use it, please. And also the crop mop ball wipes. You never know when an opportunity strikes, so you should always be prepared. Plus, you don't want to stink, especially when it comes to when we're all sitting down for Thanksgiving, having that Thanksgiving dinner, and probably a second dinner for most of us, because let's face it, we're eating a ton during Thanksgiving. If you suffer from staying foot or stand on your feet all day, then I have a product for you. The Foot Duster Foot Deodorant, which is a free gift. The Cooling Tea Tree Oil offers a pleasant experience for the stankiest feet and allows you to take your shoes off in confidence. The Manscaped Refined Cologne is a cost-effective way to smell clean and fresh for your date. The Crop Cleanser Hair and Body Wash was designed for with aloe vera and sea salt to leave your skin clean, fresh, moisturized, and reinvigorated. These formulations are all vegan, cruelty-free, dye-free, sulfate-free, and paraben-free, so you know your manhood's in good hands. Get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com with our promo code. It's been the same as always, LLP. 
Again, that's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com with the code LLP. Make your balls a priority this fall. As always, thank you to our sponsors at Manscaped. You guys are the best. And thank you for supporting our podcast and representing our podcast. You guys are the best. Little roll call action really quick before we get into the meat and potatoes of this show. The NBA and the NBA Players Association are still miles apart on the start of a 2021 season, as the start of the season could very well be in doubt. As you all know, the season just ended very recently because of the COVID outbreak, and there have been rumors about an after the New Year start, maybe even Christmas. They're all over the place. So hopefully we get the NBA back sooner rather than later, because I want to see the Celtics play again very soon. The NFL and the NFLPA are discussing a potential playoff expansion for the 2020 season as the COVID contingency plan is being set in place. And finally, womp womp for Red Sox fans. Dodgers right fielder Mookie Betts was announced as a 2020 NL MVP finalist. That guy did play in the Red Sox one time, and it was kind of cool. That's really it for our roll call this week. Let's just get into it. Let's start off with the bad first, guys. Let's start off with the Patriots. Their season's over. Like, let, let, let's, just, let's just call it like it is. Their season is basically done. I mean, so here's the deal. Patriots played on Sunday an AFC East matchup in Buffalo against the Buffalo Bills. Keep in mind, Tom Brady, when he was here with the Patriots, pretty much owned the Bills. I think he was, what, 18-3 and three or something ridiculous like that? I know he had three losses. That's it. To Buffalo. Fiesta, you can ch- fact check that for me. I'm pretty sure. I'm uh, no, I think it was only two. Because remember, one of the games he was suspended. Still. Oh, very true. Him. Wasn't that? Oh, okay. I think I know what you're talking about. We can check that, but he, you get the point. Yeah, yeah was, we'll, we'll post it up. On the he was basically he was basically unstoppable. Yeah. But that's not the case this time. Cam Newton was the starting quarterback. This Patriots team was struggling. And I do give them credit here. You gotta give the Patriots a little bit of credit. They were right there with Buffalo. They probably should have beaten Buffalo, if we're gonna be honest. But once again, 24 to 21. Patriots are driving down the field. Cam Newton rushes to the left. Looks like he's going to turn up field. Fumbles with about 20 seconds left at the Buffalo 15-yard line. Buffalo recovers and holds on for a 24-21 victory over the Patriots, which drops the Patriots' record to to 2-5. And And the Bills go to 6-2, and and they are pretty much in command of the division. Miami is in second right now with a 4-3 record. Do you want to know his record against the Bills? I do. What was it? 32 and three. 32 and three. Okay, so I was right about the losses. I forgot yeah. that they played the Bills that much. But then again, well, twice, twice a like, year. For 20. 20. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. So forgive me for being way off at the wins, but the losses, okay. So he had three losses. Thank you, Potter, for the fact checking. Yeah. So when I saw this game, a few things stood out. First of all, Damian Harris. This was the Damian Harris game 16 carries, 102 yards. One touchdown run, I believe it's a 22-yard touchdown run to decrease the deficit from 14 to 12 before the Jacoby Myers two-point conversion to tie the game at 14. And Jacoby Myers looked pretty good. Six receptions, 58 yards. It's not going to wow you on the stat sheet, but it looked like Cam Newton was more comfortable going to Myers. And Myers looks like he's getting more comfortable week by week. There's just one thing that I don't understand, and it's – I guess you could say you understood it in hindsight, but realistically, you're like, why, why was this? So after the Patriots tied up at 14, Bill Belichick tried to get a little too creative, tried to get an onside kick, tried to steal possession from the Bills. Bills obviously recover, and they start at, the, at least the, their own 45 or even the 50-yard line. So my question is, why are you doing that? And the second thing that, and I'm sure we'll talk about this, now that you're two and five, you have a ton of injuries. And we're going to talk about the trade deadline in a second. At this point, are we just, are the Patriots just tanking? Are they going to tank to try to get a top 10 pick, maybe even a top five pick? It's worth the discussion. But real quick, I'm going to kick it to Powder first, then Fiesta. Powder, thoughts on just the Bills and Patriots game? Because this was, it was a tightly contested game, but still disappointing nonetheless. Yeah, it was definitely heartbreaking at the end when I thought the Patriots were going to come down and score. Like we've seen so many times, even though, yes, obviously that was led by Tom Brady, but I thought Cam Newton was going to lead a last-second game-winning drive. Um, but 
you just it just showed the Patriots who we thought were a good running defense and and the Bills weren't a good running team or had a good running defense. Bills ran all over the Patriots and the Patriots just could not get really anything going for most of the game. You saw some bright spots, some good things during the game, but not a lot. And just hope that the Patriots can bounce back, maybe win a couple games. But yeah, it might be tank season to get a good draft pick to try and reload for next season years to come. Yeah, and it's funny because it was sort of a battle of the running games if when yeah. you really break it down. I mean, the Bills were trying to run all over the Patriots, especially when Lawrence Guy and Juwan Bentley went down during the game. So obviously there was sort of that missing piece that the Bills could just easily run through. The Patriots had to run yeah. the ball a lot because obviously they had Nikhil Harry and Julian Edelman out. But yeah, it was just it was an interesting game. And you know what? The tank may be on, but we'll see. All right, Fee, hit us with those award winning takes. Um I kind of agree with you. It was the Damien Harris game. Also, it was the Jacoby Myers game. I thought he really was pretty good yeah. also. Uh, Josh, uh, the, the the rookie linebacker, Josh. Josh Uchi. Uchi. Yeah, I was drawing a blank on the name. He got played pretty well. Um, I thought J.C. Jackson played pretty well. I thought had another interception. Yeah, like not only the interception, but kind of held on to his own with Stephon Dix, one of the premier receivers yeah. in the NFL. So, I mean, there's some bright spots, but – I mean, I'll say this best. I got – I said I said a tweet. Are they in the uh, Trevor Lawrence or Justin Fields uh, sweepstakes? And uh, one of our good friends, Connor Ryan, from Verbally Committed, said that – and I kind of agree with this. They're in the, they're in the sweepstakes to get in the sweepstakes. I think they're going to win, say, next Sunday uh, – next Monday because I think the Jets are the worst – one of the worst te- constructed teams in probably history. Um, but they're probably only going to win if they do it right. If they want to get – I think they should get the highest pick possible. There are Let the young kids play on offense um, and defense. I, I still ride with Cam. I mean, as long as he doesn't turn over the football, it's like keep him going. Because I thought he played well. I thought that that was – it was yeah. given the weather, but given the game plan, I thought – They did an overall good job. I didn't like some of the red zone decisions, um, especially down at the half and the last minute. I think they should have been a little bit more aggressive. But I I mean, I also throw out another stat, and it's going to show how, like, um, our season has gone. We've had the ball inside the 30 as our final possession with under a minute, a minute 30, um, three times this season. At the one-yard line, Seattle, the 25 versus Denver, and the 15, uh, or the 20, whatever. Where it, it was close enough. It, yeah, it was in the red enough. zone. It was about to be in the red zone. Yeah, it was in the red zone in Buffalo. And you don't score or tie the game, of course, in overtime. You're only three. That's your season right there. Right. But no matter how bad the receiving core has been or anything, you're 0-3 in those situations. If you win two of those games, we're talking about a 4-3 and three team. It may come down to quarterback play, execution, play call, a bit of luck, but it shows that – not even if you have Tom Brady, but just more consistency in anything, you're probably on four and three. That's your season right there. That, it that's is. not like you get – you're not getting your blo- doors blown off. So it's, not, it's like you're losing in situations you used to capitalize on. And that's kind of shocking. And the mm-hmm. three losses, you're losing by six points or less. So, yeah. like you said, they're not getting their doors blown open. They're not getting blown out. The only really bad game they played was San Francisco. That's yeah. it. That's the only real stinker they had. Even the Kansas City game, they were, yeah, in, were in the, the game. You were in, in the fourth quarter. You were in the game. You were down four. Without Cam Newton. Without Ooh. Cam Newton. It's so, like- I mean, that goes to show that it's just been that kind of season. And I think it's because these young kids are sort of coming in and they sort of need to learn what it's like to finish these games and capitalize on these opportunities. But, again, it is what it is. Really quick, the Patriots are at the Jets on Monday Night Football. I mean, if you lose to the Jets, you either are just really bad or the tank is fully on. Oh, if you lose to the Jets, if you, I'll just say this right now. I, I'm on get the highest pick as possible, but if you lose to the Jets, you're in the discussion. Like, we can't yes. decide. Oh, yeah. you're, you're in the discussion. And Re- – yeah, so that's all. That's yeah. my take on that. That's my take. I know, and I think a lot of us agree. I think both of us agree too. Bowder and I agree that this is the case. Yeah. So now, when you have this game, I'm thinking this is going to be a 21 to 10 
Patriots sort of game where, you know, it's going to be ugly. It's, it's not going to be great, but it's going to be a situation where the Patriots should win this game because if the Patriots don't win this game, then it doesn't look really all that great. Yeah, and um, you said 21 to 10, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I think the Patriots are going to win like 20 to 10. Um, I kind of want them to lose. I don't know about you, Potter. I kind of want them to lose. But I'm on the full tank mode, but that's just my thing. Uh, again, I don't know. It's just it, it, feels, it feels like that. They're going to win on Monday night, but. Should they really? <laughs> yeah. If you want the highest pick possible, obviously you want to lose to the Jets, who are literally the worst team in the league. But I just can't see, like, Bill Belichick and his pride letting them lose to this bad of a team. I think it's going to be – I don't even know if the Jets get 10 points, maybe like a 24-7 type of game where Patriots just kind of run all over the Jets. I don't know if Cam will pass it that much and it'll just be a running game for the Patriots and get the confidence up and a win, but I don't know how many more wins after that they will get. Feet? No, I already went. I already went. So Okay, so I twenty one to ten, twenty four to seven feet. What was your prediction? I said twenty to ten. <laughs> okay. So we're pretty much right on the same page. So yeah. we're all right around the same thing. It's not gonna be a blowout like we're used to seeing like even last Honestly, year. Honestly, I'm not even gonna watch the game. I'm gonna be completely honest. This is gonna be a bad <laughs> Monday night game. Oh, I'm I'm still gonna watch it just because there's nothing else really to watch, and it's the Patriots. I'm still gonna watch every Sunday or Monday, whichever game it is. So, we'll see what happens. We're not completely done with the Patriots yet. Just really quick, because I know Fee wanted to touch on this. Kind of an underwhelming trade deadline, especially for the Patriots. They traded with the Dolphins to get a receiver. I think his name's Isaiah Ford, if I'm right. Yeah, Isaiah Ford. Isaiah Ford. He played for Virginia Tech. I'm pretty sure. Yep. I, I think I saw that correctly. He was like an ACC, like almost all conference receiver. If I saw that right. Yeah. So, I mean, does it really help? We'll see. I so, actually am going to say something that's kind of, kind of like, so they've already indicated because he can play outside, inside, do whatever you want. He's pretty shifty. He's 24, he's 6'2". Um, he's going to be your slot receiver for the rest of the year. Okay, fine. I, I I'll mean, take it. And he might, and he's an RFA, so he's probably going to be back on the roster. This might, I don't want to like put it out there. This might be one of your replacements for Julian Edelman going okay. forward. I think that, that they'll get another slot guy, but this might, they might, I mean, they're going to have that element. A lot of the receivers are under the age of 27. They have a young run. That's all. Yeah. That's something to point out. I mean, I could see Edelman being out the door after this year. He's in kind of again injury prone at towards this part of his career and, Maybe he wants to go elsewhere. Maybe he wants to be back with Brady. So who knows what he wants to do. But I could see the Patriots, like you said, be going younger with their receivers and trying to load up that room and get them good. Because you look, yeah, I feel like younger receivers are always better. There's always like the Larry Fitzgerald, but there's not many older. And I, I'll do one, mention yeah. one other thing uh, for the trade deadline. I mean, it was it's always underwhelming, but don't be surprised if they revisit the Gilmore situation again. Um, potentially to get a player of need, especially at the receiving core, intent OBJ, intent something else because they need a corner. So I'm just pointing that out. That that was floated out there, and I think it might make sense. But that, that's uh, another day, another uh, take for another day. Okay, fair enough. All right, one final thing before we sort of move into a segment that Fiesta came up with, and honestly, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Obviously. I shouldn't say obviously because this isn't an obviously thing because it doesn't happen a lot, but Bill Belichick actually had some interesting comments the other day, a little interview with his former offensive coordinator, Charlie Weiss, that basically indicated that because of the way the Patriots spent money the last five years or so, they're in the position now that they're in where they couldn't pay anybody. Belichick was quoted to say he gave Cam Newton a million dollars you know, we sort of sold out and we won three Super Bowls, made it to a fourth AFC championship and whatnot, made it to a fourth Super Bowl and then the AFC championship. It's just surprising because you know what? It seems like we're not used to Bill Belichick sort of, I don't want to say complaining, but like addressing what's going on because he's always just been, we need to be better. You know, we got to be better. And he's still doing a little this year, but we're starting to see, you know, almost like 
chinks in the armor a little bit, so to speak. We're seeing a different side of Belichick, which I thought was interesting. It, and a lot of people are saying he's whining. A lot of people are saying, you know, this and that. He's just telling the truth. I mean, I don't know about the selling out part, but he's just telling the truth. He's like, we just don't have money. Like, plain and simple. So that's all I really got on the Belichick comments. Fee, powder, open floor. Like, if you guys have anything, feel uh, free. I'll just be quick. I love it when Bill's snarky. It's the best snark. It's the best Bill. Um, I do think he is valid, but also, like, you look at the real spending – of the cap or like the money, they're more middle of the pack. So I can understand why some people are like saying excuses or not, but I, I, I will say this. You are getting kind of an indication that the Patriots are going to be big players this off season for, they're going to be in every rumor for quarterbacks and uh, in offensive weapons and in the draft. So they're going to be everywhere. So this is going to be another interesting off season for the Patriots. But I, I do. I thought the comments were very interesting and I think Bill is trying to say, it is what it is. <laughs> as simple as that. All right, Powder, any final thoughts before we get into this little game? No, just looking forward to seeing what Bill has to do this offseason. Like he said, I think the Patriots are going to be huge players. I think they're going to try and load up and not have this rebuilding phase take years. All right. Without further ado, Mr. Facet, you can take control of your segment. Tell us what it's called and what we're going to be doing. So – this I, I'll, this segment is called Quarterback Room Roulette. So I have seven quarterback rooms. This is in the scenario that the Patriots do move on from Cam Newton this offseason, which is possible. Might not be, but they do. I have seven quarterback rooms, one through seven. I will go through this list. These are quarterbacks, are for, particularly for the starters, four of these – four or five of these quarterbacks are in the price range of base salary between 20 and 25 million. They're probably going to be moved on uh, after the season or going to be speculated. I will say this. There's a couple of quarterbacks that aren't on the list. Just get it out of the way. I did not have Aaron Rodgers on this list. I did not have Deshaun Watson on this list and I did not have Kirk Cousins on this list. So okay. I've already, so I will say this. Um, there probably will be a part two of this series, of this game show, when we do have the offseason in February um, as we get more rumors and everything. But the, and you know, I'll make it a little different. But seven rooms, I know that Al, you wanted to write down. Powder, do you need to write down any of them? So Yeah, I will real quick. Yeah, so I just want to make sure that we're all, all good. Yeah. So I'm going to put out seven rooms. You're going to have the criteria. You're going to have a starter, backup, and a, and a third string. And the third string, I'll just point out, will be a draft pick. So you don't have to worry about that. It'll okay. be a draft pick, but I will say what type of draft pick I had in mind. So right. you boys Go ready? Let's do it. So room number one, the Matt Ryan room. So I have Matt Ryan, Ryan Hoyer, and a draft pick. And a draft pick in a higher round, first or second round. Okay. We know you guys are ready for quarterback room number two. I'm ready when you when Powder's ready. Yeah, whenever you're ready. Let me know, Powder. All right. All right. Quarterback room number two. The Matt Stafford room. And this quarterback room is Matt Stafford, Jacoby Brissett, and a draft pick in a higher round, dra rounds one through three. Okay. All right. All right. Quarterback room number three. The Alex Smith room. And there, there it is. There's the outlook that I had to. All right. So there's the Alex Smith room. All right. So you have Alex Smith, Mitchell Trubisky, and a draft pick, a higher end draft pick, probably going to be picked in the first round. All right. Whatever you're ready, I can see the YouTube page is going to be like your face. All right. Quarterback room number four. I'm going to throw this one out there. The Carson Wentz room. Uh, you have Carson Wentz, Jared Stidham, and a draft pick. This draft pick is more of a lower round, fourth to seventh. Round. All right. Uh, let me know when you guys are ready. Yep. All right. Um, the fifth room. 
the Sam Darnold room. And this is, has Sam Darnold, Ryan Hoyer, and a draft pick. And a draft Jared pick. Scally must have gotten in your ear. Uh, the draft pick um, is a lower round pick. Okay. So that's room number five. Two more rooms. Let me know if you let me know when you're done, Powder. Yep. All right. Um, quarterback room number six, the Jimmy Garoppolo room. Okay. And this room has Jimmy Garoppolo, Garner Mitchu, and a draft pick in the lower rounds for the quarterback position. Again, rounds four through seven. All righty. And then the last room, quarterback room number seven, the Baker Mayfield room. Ooh. And the Baker Mayfield room is Baker Mayfield, of course. <laughs> Ryan Fitzpatrick, Fitzmagic himself as a backup, and a draft pick in the lower rounds for the quarterback position. And how many of these are we taking? So, again, just explain the rules. Your preference, one through seven. The room that you want the most to the room you want the least. This is so riveting. Some of uh, these are so bad. <laughs> so... Some Whenever these, you guys are ready to go with the list, really uh, Otter or Al, you can go. Either you go first, I'll go last on this. <laughs> some of these are just holy crap. These, some of these are bad. <laughs> Fiesta, what the heck? So again, uh, some of these are like you pulled these out of left field, literally. I mean, these are the quarterbacks that are probably going to be available this off season. All right, I got my list. I'm 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 ready to go whenever. If powder, if you want me to go and you need a couple extra minutes, that's fine. Give me like two seconds. No problem. And folks, while you're at it, again, please rate and subscribe to the Legend Single Podcast on iTunes, Spotify, and on YouTube under the Couch Guy Sports YouTube page. Go check it out. Whenever you're ready. All right. Who do you want? I want to hear yours first. I want All to right. see how many we have the same. All right. So my number one room is a Matt Stafford room, room two. I think Stafford's always been in a bad situation with the Lions. I think he's a Hall of Fame quarterback. I think putting him in a winning situation. He has made the playoffs a few times, and the Lions just – one of their losses was awful. Um, so I just think putting him in a winning spot could be good for him. Number two was getting Jimmy G back. I, I would like to have him back. You saw what he did against the Patriots. I think he does have a lot of potential. My third room – is the Carson Wentz room. I really like Wentz. I've always liked him. I think just getting him out of Philly and because we all know Philly probably wants, even though some fans love Wentz, I think getting him out of there where Nick, um, Nick Folds won where he was and took over for him. Number four is Baker. I just love Baker. He's a good quarterback. I think having a lower pick, Belichick can always de um, develop him and having Fitz, if Baker doesn't work out, having Fitz Magic come in. Number five is the Sam Darnold room. I think having Darnold out of the Jets, he can win. Because um, you see as potentially just having awful coaching. Again, a lower pick, maybe develop him um, under Belichick. Uh, was that five? Six is Matt Ryan with a higher draft pick. Have Matt Ryan. He has made it to Super Bowl. Yes, against the Patriots and lost in heartbreaking fashion, but also getting a high draft pick could help the Patriots get maybe have Matt Ryan in for a year or two and, um, and just develop a really good quarterback. And then my last room is the Alex Smith room. I think having a high draft pick makes that better, but Alex Smith is so injury prone and Mitch Trubinsky, I don't know what. Like, he has been up and down his whole career so far in the NFL. So, I just don't like that room. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm going to go from seven to one. I'm going to make this quick because some of these were just like PU, number one. I mean, it's reality, Al. I'm just it's, it. Well, these rea this reality sucks. But then again, 2020 sucks too. So, I mean, it's, it's fitting. So, number seven, I'm going the worst one. I'm going Alex Smith and Mitch Trubisky because that is just two quarterbacks that I don't want anywhere near the Patriots. Alex Smith is one big hit away from being done. I mean, you saw what happened with his leg. Yeah, he had a great story, but I, I just can't depend on him getting hit. And Mitch Trubisky, there's a reason that Nick Foles has been playing over Trubisky this year. So, yeah, yeah that one can go. On that, one? We, that can go off to the sun. Yeah. Number six, Matt Ryan and Brian Hoyer. I mean, 
maybe for a year, but it's just uh, there's something about Matt Ryan I'm just not a fan of. I mean, especially after Super Bowl 51, he just hasn't been the same. The Falcons haven't been the same, but it could change if he came to New England, but no, I'm good with that. Number five, I have Matt Stafford. He's just great quarterback, great talent. And Jacoby Brissett would be intriguing as a backup, but I just, no, I'm, I'm good with that. I'll go with him, number five. Number four, I'm going to go with Sammy Darnold. This was a situation that Jared Scally started talking me into a little bit because Sammy D has a lot of talent, but I think he's just in a bad situation with Adam Gase and the Jets, so that could be intriguing. Number three, I got Jimmy G, and this would have been higher if it wasn't for Minshew as the backup. because I just don't buy Gardner Minshew. Yeah, he had some good games last year with Jacksonville, but – I just don't buy him, so that's number three for me. Number two, I went Carson, Carson Wentz and Stidham. I think having those two as your starter and your backup is sufficient for this Patriots team. And then number one, I actually went with Baker Mayfield and Ryan Fitzpatrick. So I think Baker Mayfield, he has experience throwing to good receivers. He's just the type that he needs consistent coaching because he's had three head coaches in the past two and a half seasons or two plus seasons because he had Hugh Jackson, he had Freddie Kitchens, and now he has Kevin Stefanski. If he has a consistency in Bill Belichick and Josh McDaniels, I think he can thrive. And Ryan Fitzpatrick, we've seen what he can do. You know, he yeah. can go in there and he can – if when he's on, the whole thing with Fitzpatrick is inconsistency. But when he's on, he's a smart quarterback that makes good decisions and can win you ball games. So that's my number one QB room. So I'm interested to see where Fee stands on this. So I'm going to go seven through one. So I agree with you in the Alex Smith room, PU. Get, get rid of it. The number six room, actually, I'm going to go with Carson Wentz. And the reason why is he's too turnover prone. Yes, he has talent, but he has too – he throws a lot of – he turns over the ball a lot. And he's not – like seven and six, he's also hurt. Like, he does, doesn't does start. And you know what Bill likes? Bill likes consistent starter. He likes guys that are going to be there on Sunday. Five, I have Sam Darnold. I would have him higher if he was with any other team. It is so hard to trade. There's going to be so many teams interested in him this offseason. The Saints, the potentially the 49ers. You've got to have a lot of teams um, interested. Four, I have the Jimmy Garoppolo room. And I, I just like, are you fine with being 10 6 with him potentially missing games every year? Like, if you're fine with that, then that's just like, it's another thing. It's like, you, you know what you're going to get out of him, but you might not already know his ceiling. Three, the Baker Mayfield room. I think this is the, might actually be the most intriguing one. Like, I know people are going to say, oh, but Cleveland's five and three fiesta. What are you talking about? Baker's the one that's holding them back. They don't like him. They don't trust him for some reason. And I think that they might move on from him this offseason, especially if Kirk Cousins in Minnesota does become available. That coach – for the Browns now it was the offensive court. I think yep. the offensive coordinator. Yes, he was. For the Viking. So that's a scenario where that could happen. The number two room, I had to go with Matt Stafford. The contract's good. Um, he's 33, going to be 34 next year. Um, it's an interesting room. The thing is, he does get hurt, but the talent's there. And you know, I think if he had a good, like, consistent coach, he'd be 11 and 5 football team. And number one, I actually have to pick the Matt Ryan room. I know that you're down on it now. The reason I had Hoyer as the two for now is I, I'm hoping, like, the, the quarterback that you draft high is the backup. So I'm saying it's, like, whoever you draft is the backup. So it's Matt the potential Ryan. for Hoyer to get knocked down to the third string. Or, or cut. So I just or even cut, right. It, it makes sense. He's gonna, Ryan's going to be 36. He's the, he is going to be the bridge quarterback, especially if you draft high. He doesn't get hurt, and he's actually put up some decent numbers since that Super Bowl. It, and it's just like you're going to get the high touchdowns, high 20s, low 30s. The picks are going to be 13 to 15, but I think you can live with that. So that's my rooms. I think, again, I like this game. I mean, I think in the off season when we know a little bit more, because especially if some of these quarterback room, quarterbacks that, are, that I mentioned earlier – might get on the market. We might do this a little different, like one through 10, where you rank it. But I think this is my, my profession preference, especially if they do move on from Cam Newton. But that's not a guarantee either. So, I nope. mean, they might keep him. So, that, I mean, given, given like your face, like some of these lists, I might rather stick with Cam because I know <laughs> where I'm going to get out of him. And I know that he's going to be a leader. So, I, I don't know. 
with some of these rooms. So, I mean, if I if we had to put Cam, if I had to put Cam in the middle, I'd probably put him in the three or four range. But I don't know. So there you have it, our QB room for right now, the 2020 season. Like Fiesta said, we will come back to this during the 2020 to 2021 off season. So we'll see what happens with that. Final topic for tonight before we head out of here. We're going to shift gears a little bit. We're going to talk a little Red Sox. So the Boston Red Sox are currently the only team in the MLB with a managerial vacancy. And it came out the other day, according to John Heyman, that there are five finalists, supposedly, for the job. Those finalists are as follows. Carlos Mendoza, who is the Yankees bench coach. Sam Fold, who is a player information coordinator, I believe, for the Rays. Am I not mistaken? Yeah. So for the Rays, James Rosen, who was the Twins hitting coach from 2017, 2019, and was the Marlins bench coach last year. Don Kelly, who was the Houston Astros first base coach in 2019 and then was the bench coach for the Pirates in 2020. And finally, Alex Cora, who was the Red Sox manager in 2018, 2019, before getting suspended for the year because of his contributions to the Astros cheating scandal a few years back when he was the bench coach for the Astros. So similar to the QB room, I want to do this really quick. One through five. I think we all know who number one is. I think that's very obvious for the three of us. But I want you two through five to give me quickly who you would like to see if Alex Cora doesn't get the job and who you least likely would get it. Because I have a list in mind. So, for example, this is going to be the list episode. So, Liam, if you're listening to this, just name this the list episode. So, again, we have Alex Cora, Carlos Mendoza, Sam Fold, James Rosen, and Don Kelly. So I'm going to make my list real quick. You guys can make your list really quick. Again, I think we all know who number one is for all of us. So whenever you guys are ready, you guys may have the floor. All right, you can go first, Byron. Obviously, core one, but we don't want to talk about that. Um, I would probably go. Um, I don't really know these guys that well, even though I'm supposed to be the baseball guy. But um, <laughs> well, you trumped him down. How does that feel? Oh, I, stumped um, I stumped the powder. I'd probably do. I'm trying to figure out. I like Floyd. Um, I'm looking him up right now. He is the director of intelligence for the Phillies and the guy who just understands analytics. But um, I'll do him too. But the only thing is, I hope he doesn't turn into a Kevin Cash, as we yeah. saw in the, um, in the World Series. That probably, well, lost, I think, the Rays game six. I don't know about the World Series. Then I like. Um, James Rosen, just the Marlins are coming up there. I think they're going to be a team that surprises everybody year in and year out now. They made the playoffs this year. I just think they're good. I think getting someone off of them would be good. Then I'll do Carlos Mendoza and then Don Kelly. Okay. V? Actually, I have the same list. <laughs> same exact list? Okay. Yeah. So so I'll, I have, I'll just be quick. And I'll just really be quick. I don't care about two through five. Give me number one. I want him yeah. here. If you don't get Alex Cora here, it's a failure. Yes, agreed. thousand percent agreed. So I had Cora number one as well. I actually had Mendoza second because a lot of people around the MLB have been saying that he, they think he'd be a good fit in Boston, especially because he's bilingual. And that's something that Alex Cora was good with. He was bilingual, so he could relate to all the players. So that's something that's been good. Sam Fold, I'm going number three because I think it's going to be intriguing to see what he can do in sort of a managerial role, he sort of, not sort of, he interviewed for a managerial job a few years ago. I forget with what team, but apparently, obviously, he wasn't ready. So that would be interesting. Don Kelly, number four. I mean, he's coming from Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, I think, has, correct me if I'm wrong, do they have the number one pick in the draft this year? Yeah. Yes. So yeah. they, coming from Pittsburgh, I mean, I don't know exactly what he's going to bring to the table. But again, you never know what can happen. And I actually had James Rose in fifth just because I don't know anything about him. But yeah, like, yeah, the Marlins maybe are on the come up, but I just, I don't know anything about the guy, but I'm, I'm on the same wavelength as fee. Get me Alex Cora. 
I mean, he wants to come back. He should come back. The only thing that I saw that isn't a good he sign right now. The Globe is telling him hire Alex Cora. I know, like that should tell you everything. But one thing that I saw is that High and Bloom and Alex Cora have not had an in-person meeting yet. So that I don't know what that can mean. I don't know if that's a really bad sign or if it's just because of COVID restrictions and everything. But you need to try to have that meeting because if you don't bring in Alex Cora, High and Bloom is going to be the most hated man in Boston because he'll have traded Mookie Betts and then not bring back the manager that pretty much everybody else, including your ownership, wants back, the players want back, the fans want back, and everything else. So, again, hopefully by next week we'll have some more news. Hopefully the Red Sox will announce their manager by next week. That would be great. Hopefully. Hopefully. But other than that, guys, we're almost at 100 episodes. I know. Yeah. It's crazy. We have some fun stuff planned for the 100th episode. We do plan on having a guest next week, potentially. We'll see what happens. They said that they want to do it next week. I'll keep trying. Okay. So it is a guest that we've had on in the past. Probably one of our most listened to guests, if you know who that is. So also, shout out to us. We got 300 followers. So we're on the right path. Small State Big Takes getting 500 followers. So we got some catching up to do, guys. We'll, yeah. we'll get on that. But other maybe than our, that, maybe, maybe our potential guest can help us. That could help us. That very well could help us. If we can get a few more followers, I know I said 300, but you know how Twitter is with some of these accounts and everything. If we can get above to even like 305 followers, maybe next week we'll do a giveaway. Maybe we'll do a Couch Guy Sports giveaway. So help us get, get us five more followers. If you're listening to this, if you've listened all the way, thank you. And you're an animal for doing so. But five more followers and then we will do a giveaway. So get us to that 305 mark by our recording next week. Any final thoughts before we head out guys? Just hopefully you voted. Hopefully you did your civic duty and went to vote and we will see how this all goes. All righty. If nothing else for this week, Tom Saban facet on my left, probably your right. If you're watching this powder on the bottom, I'm your host, Al. Thank you for listening. And thank you for watching episode 93 again rate subscribe itunes spotify youtube everything else soundcloud you name it go follow us manscape 20 percent off free shipping with the promo code llp and we'll see you next week for episode 94 yes sir